I thank you for your word. <clears throat> I thank you will go forth with power under the anointing in Jesus' name. I thank and I praise you. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Your words will be written in the hearts of the hearers in Jesus' name. I thank you for revelation knowledge that you open the eyes of understanding in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for your presence here and that your eyes are big on the inside of me. Speak, speak through me this morning in Jesus' name. And in the name of Jesus, I bind and break every foul wick down to spirit in this place, every religious spirit, spirits of tradition, lying spirits, doubt and unbelief, I bind you, I break it, you go from this place in Jesus' name. Loose that anointing to break that yoke in Jesus' name. Loose the love, joy, and the peace of the Lord in Jesus' name. Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's up. I'm up. It's up. <laughs> That's up. Isn't it? Why? No. <laughs> Oh, there. That's why. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I just broke the mic. Okay, the past uh, few weeks, we've looked at um, the will. Amen? Now, we have to put our will with God's will. We also have to uh, look at the fact that we have, are to what? Please God. Amen? How do we please God? Answer? Hello? Obey his word. Who's that? Are you in the car, Marsha? Marcia? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Praise God. Put your will with his will, amen? amen. In other words, like Marsha said, doing the word. If you do the word, then you put your will with his will. <clears throat> okay? Now, each and every one of you here, also those in Zoom land, um, do you have fire? I'm talking about on the inside of you. Do you have fire? Yes. Okay. Here, yes. Zoom land, don't know. Zoomland, do you have fire? <coughs> yes? Yes. Okay. We all have a fire on the inside of us, amen? Amen. However, with some of us, the fire, I mean the fire is there, we'll get the Holy Ghost, amen? But with some of us, it feels like the fire is this small. You understand? A little bitty fire, right? Now, what we need to do, <clears throat> we need to stoke up the fire that's in us. You understand? The fire in us is not there for nothing. Amen? Amen. The fire in us like, is supposed to do something. And if your fire is very, very small, then what you have to do, you have to stoke up the fire. Amen. If you have a fireplace, <clears throat> and the fire goes down, what do you do? You put more wood or coal, whatever, amen, to make the fire bigger. And that's, in other words, stoke up the fire. So that's what we have to do. We have to stoke up that fire, amen? And it's very important. And when you stoke up the fire, okay, and keep it burning, don't just stoke it up and then it dies down and you let it go and it becomes very small again. Many times it happens when a person's backslides, okay? None of you here are that way, amen? amen? But backsliding is simply moving away from God, moving away from the things of God. That's backsliding, okay? You may be saved, you may be filled with the Holy Ghost, but when you backslide, that means you move away from the things of God 
and from God. You don't spend time with him. You don't talk to him. You don't go to church. You don't read the Bible. You don't pray. You don't do nothing. You go back sort of in the things of the world. That's backsliding. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? And so a person who is backslidden, <clears throat> they still have that little bitty fire on the inside of them. Okay? It's, the fire is always there. It's just a little bitty. Now, in order for them to stoke up that fire, they have to do something. Okay? And when they stoke it up, then revival comes. Amen. Okay? Revival comes. And it's very important because God wants us to have revival in us. Amen? What is revival? It's very simple. Renewed conviction and repentance. Repentance. Okay? Followed by an intense desire to live and in obedience to God. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> are you with me? Okay? Now, you know, sometimes you say, okay, I ask God to forgive, which is good because we need to ask him to forgive. Okay? Especially if we've done things wrong. But with the forgiveness comes what? Repentance. Hello? Amen. <laughs> Meaning what? You go to God, ask him to forgive. You turn from sin. You turn away from those things that you did wrong. Amen? That's what repentance is. Not keep doing it, but you turn away from it. Okay? And so if, if you want to have revival, that's what you need to do. Okay? All right. You have to do what? Give up your will to do God's will. Okay? In how? Deep humility. In other words, you have to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Amen? Amen. How do you humble yourself before God? Pray tell. I pray you tell. Hello? Hello? <laughs> How do you humble yourself before God? Oh, I'm so humble, Lord. You humble yourself before God to do His Word. Okay? When you go to First uh, Peter for a moment. <clears throat> Am I loud enough? Just keep talking. <laughs> I can't do it. Too. I'm, I'm too loud. Oh, you'll be quiet. Un momento, por favor. Is that better? I don't know. Praise God. Amen. What did I say? First Peter, <clears throat> chapter 5. Let's look at verse 6. First Peter 5, 6. We're talking about humbling yourself before God. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that you may exalt in due time. Okay? How do you humble? By casting, verse 7, Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Meaning what? You humble yourself before God by doing his word. Okay? When he says casting all your care upon God, <clears throat> that means that's what you do. That's doing his word. Amen? So when you do his word, you humble yourself. Amen? Amen. If you're not humble, then you say, well, I can do it myself. Go right ahead and fall in a ditch. Amen? Amen? So deep humility, just really humbling yourself before God. Okay? 
doing the word of God. That's how you humble yourself. Is it okay, brother? <clears throat> Thank you, brother. <laughs> now, the revival, we're going to talk about that a little bit, okay? It starts in your own heart. I know many times we, you know, we want revival, revival, revival. And we don't do that. You know, you know what I'm saying? It starts in your own heart. That's where revival starts. Okay? Let's go to the book of Hosea, chapter 10. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Hosea, chapter 10. Are we going to read verse 12? <clears throat> Hosea 10, 12. It says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Now it says, break up your fallow ground. Okay? What does that mean? Fellow ground, the ground that is, um, that is plowed or tilled, but it's not sown yet. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing is sown yet, okay? You, you understand what I'm saying? Okay? And so it needs to be, so it lies kind of waste. So it needs to be broken up again, okay? All right? and become mellowed or softened before, again, it is ready to save what? The seeds. Amen? Amen? Well, that's the same with our hearts. Let's talk about our hearts. <coughs> Excuse me. Just a minute, please. Okay, so it's the same with our heart. Our heart sometimes becomes kind of hardened. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so we need to plow again, okay? And it needs to be broken up and become mellow again so that we can do what? Sow the seed of the word in us. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> so, but if you want to do that in your own heart, because like I said, it starts with us. Revival starts with us, okay? We have to do something. So if you want to break up the fellow uh, ground of your heart, you must do something, okay? But what you must not do, okay? First of all, you look at... You begin with yourself. You don't look at others. You need to do this. You need to do this. No, you look at your own hearts. You understand, understand what I'm saying? Because we are very, very, <clears throat> very quick to point at others, say, you got to do this, you got to do that. Amen? But we ourselves are not doing it. No, amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen? Amen? Now, <clears throat> what are we to do? Examine ourselves. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. It has taken little feet and walked somewhere. <laughs> Second, 2 Corinthians 13. Let's look at verse 5. Examine one another. Who says amen? What does it say? It doesn't say examine one another. Examine yourselves. Amen? So we have to examine ourselves. <clears throat> Whether you are in the faith. Prove your own selves. 
Okay. Sorry. <coughs> so examine yourself, okay, whether you are in the faith. Don't examine someone else, okay? If you want revival, you examine yourself, not someone else. Amen? Are you ready? Are you willing? Okay? To do the will of God. That's how you examine yourself. Are you ready? Are you willing to do the will of God? And let him increase in you. Go to the book of John, chapter 3. <clears throat> Are you willing to let him increase? John chapter 3. John says here, he must increase, I must decrease. Amen. Amen? And that's the way it should be. That he must increase in us. We must decrease. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? In other words, your desire should be that people will see Jesus in you. Amen. Not you but Jesus in you. Amen? Amen? So they will not see you, but they will see Jesus. Okay? So that should be your prayer, that he increases and you decrease. <clears throat> Amen? If you want to do that, then you must do something. Okay? Of course, you examine yourself and all that. Go to Matthew, ch excuse me, Mark chapter 10. <clears throat> Mark chapter 10. And here you see the account of Bartimaeus, okay? In verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the way, highway side begging. Now, he's blind, okay? Verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. On me. Now, I want you to see something here, okay? He heard. He heard that it was Jesus. Amen. He didn't just hear it was Jesus. But he, had, he had heard of the miracles that Jesus has done. That's why it says here, he heard it was Jesus. And because he heard Jesus was coming, he couldn't see. Amen? Amen. He began to cry out. And that's why he said, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Why? He's blind. He wants to have his sight. Amen? <clears throat> Verse 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But the more... But he cried the more a great deal. The, you son of David, have mercy of, uh, on me. Now people told him to be quiet. But he said, uh-uh. I want this man to come and heal me. Because I heard that he could heal me. And that he would heal me. So he cried louder. Verse 49. You know, when you cry out to Jesus, does he hear you? Yes. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Verse 49, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. So Jesus heard okay, and, they, and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good comfort, rise, he calls you. Okay, isn't it nice? Jesus calls you, come on, I'm ready to heal you. Isn't it nice? And then it says in verse 50, and he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Okay? Now, look what it says. He cast away his garment. Back there, they wore something, and then over that, they wore some other thing, whatever you call it. Okay? And so that thing would be in the way of him going to Jesus as fast as he could because he might trip or whatever. So what did he do? He stripped 
it away. Okay? <clears throat> so, if you want Jesus to increase and you decrease, okay, what do we have to do? We have to strip, like blind Bartimaeus, we have to strip away all the things that are hindering us, okay? We have to strip away ourselves, okay? Now, let's see. What are the things to strip away? Uh, every hindrance, whatever hindrance is in your life to give yourself fully, not half, but fully to Jesus so that you will have revival. We're talking about revival, okay? <clears throat> Which starts with us. So you have to strip yourself. Now, you know the hindrances that you might have. Amen? That's why you have to examine yourself, not other people, but yourself. Do you have doubt and unbelief? <clears throat> you strip yourself. Okay? Why do you have doubt and unbelief? Number one, because of lack of knowledge of God's word. If you don't know what God's word says, then you, you'll have doubt and unbelief. Are you with me? Amen. So, Hosea, <coughs> excuse me, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish because, because of lack of knowledge. Amen? Amen? What you don't know can kill you. Thank you for the amen, brother. <laughs> Praise God. But it's true. If you don't know that Jesus can heal you, you can die. Amen? Amen. That's why we have to be in the Word. Amen. I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about believers. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're talking about revival in ourselves. And through that, we have revival all over. Okay? But it starts with us first. <clears throat> so lack of knowledge of His Word Lack of knowledge of the integrity of God's word. Meaning what? In other words, if you don't know that what Jesus says in his word, he will do. Well, that's lack of knowledge of the integrity of God's word. God is not someone who, who can lie. You understand? What he says in his word, he will do. He will do. Period. Okay? And this is where we have to do what? We have to learn of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 11. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 11. Let's look at verse 28. And Jesus says here, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. And then he says, learn of me. Amen? Amen? We have to learn more and more about Jesus. We have to learn more and more what he does, how he does things. That's why we have to be in the word of God. We have to learn from him. And the only way that we learn from him is how? Eh? The word. Amen? In the word. For I'm meek and lonely, lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. Okay? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's the burden bearer, so we don't have to carry it. Amen. Yes? Amen. Amen? Amen? So we need to learn more and more what his will is. Amen? Amen. What is his will? Well, do you know that what he says he will do? Hallelujah. <laughs> Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. We're going to read verse. So in other words, first you have to have, I mean, you have knowledge of the word and knowledge of the integrity of God's word. What he says he will do, he will do. Amen? Amen. Verse 11, Isaiah 55, 11. 
so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall what? Accomplish that which I please, and it shall what? Prosper in a thing where to I send it. Notice what he says, that the word that's gone out of his mouth will not return void, okay, but will accomplish what he has said to do. That's what Jesus says in his word. This is God's word. This is what he says. And at the same token, when you speak <coughs> that word in faith, believing, it will do the same thing that what it says here in verse 11. It will not return void, but will accomplish what it's set to do. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. And that's very important that we are in the word of God. Okay? I like that particular scripture because it's true. What he says he will do, he will do. He's not a God who can lie. Let's go to Psalms 89. Psalms 89. I'll get there momentarily. We're going to look at uh, verse 34. And he says in verse 34, My covenant, okay, will I not break, nor alter the thing that's gone out of my lips. Underline that. Number one, he will not break his covenant. Okay? Number two, he said, nor alter. He's not going to change what has come out of his mouth. Are you with me? In other words, he's not going to change the word that has come out of his mouth, which is what we have right here in front of us. Amen? Amen? So that's why what he says he will do, he will do. Okay? So what we, we're stripping ourselves, aren't we? Yes? Are we stripping ourselves? Okay. Uno momento. <clears throat> so number one, we strip ourselves from doubt and unbelief. Okay? Number two, we strip ourselves from unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, <clears throat> Mark chapter 11. Everybody knows verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, Jesus says, what things have you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive it, you shall have it. Amen? Amen? And then we forget about the rest. But the rest is very important. And when you, when you send praying, forgive. Underline forgive. Circle it. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you trespasses. Amen. But if you do not forgive, <clears throat> neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Amen? Amen. His unforgiveness is not of God. You understand? I always say this in the area of unforgiveness. Who are we not to forgive? If we go to God, I don't know how many times, sometimes for the same stupid thing, and ask him to forgive us again and again and again. Yeah, he gets to a point when we get to him so many times, Lord, please forgive me, please forgive me, same thing. So when we get to a point, he gets to a point where he says, I forget it. Enough. I won't forgive it. No, he doesn't do that. No matter how many times you come to God and ask him to forgive, he forgives. Amen. Are we to be like Jesus? Yes. Yes. Ah, then we're to do this, aren't we? Yes. We're to forgive. Okay? But many times people make the mistake trying to forgive by feelings. If you try to forgive my feelings, <clears throat> the devil, <clears throat> excuse me, the devil's going to make sure you, you're not going to be able to forgive. Every time you see the person, 
I, can, I just can't forgive. It hurt me so bad. I cannot forgive. Okay? That's the devil. Okay? Because when God forgives, he does not remember our sin no more. Amen? Amen. I know it's more difficult for us, but every time it comes back to us, even though we have forgiven the person, and it comes back, the, the one who brings it back is the devil. It comes back to us, and says, oh, oh, devil, I already forgave. Amen. Go for me, Jesus' name. Amen. Don't receive that unforgiveness. It will take a while, okay? Believe me, I had to learn to do that. To, to get to the point where I forgive. I forgive. <laughs> I forgive. You understand? <laughs> you don't do it by feelings because the devil will make sure you get all these feelings of what they have done to you and you just cannot forgive. You do it by faith. You do it because he says to forgive. He says it right here. And when you stand praying, forgive. Amen? So if there's unforgiveness, okay, you know, unforgiveness can kill you. I've seen it. Okay? I've seen it. I've, it can also cripple you. I've seen someone who... Something, someone did something to her, okay? Until then, she was fine. But that person did something to her, and she couldn't forgive. Even though we talked to her, she couldn't forgive, okay? And to the point that she got sick, she had pain all over her body, okay? And she still wouldn't forgive, to the point that she ended up in a wheelchair and she couldn't go, she couldn't walk any further than from the table to the restroom because of unforgiveness. Yeah, that is serious. Why? Because if you don't forgive, you, are, you open. God doesn't do that to you. You understand what I'm saying? The devil, when you, you open yourself up for the devil to place these things upon you, you understand? Amen? Now, if, um, if they don't forgive, what can I say? People have died because they refuse. I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about unbelievers. Okay? Born again, spiritual Christians. Okay? People have died because they refuse to forgive. Amen? Amen? But we're all quick to forgive. Amen? Amen? And you are quick to forgive when I give you a test next week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh God. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay? So we strip ourselves for what? Unforgiveness. Amen? Like, excuse me, doubt and unbelief, unforgiveness. We strip ourselves from fear. Fear of what? Fear of men. Fear of whatever. Okay. Uh, first, Second Timothy chapter one. <clears throat> Second Timothy, Timothy chapter one. I'm going to start with verse 6. All of you here have received <coughs> gifts from God. Amen? Amen. Yes? 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 Over there? Yes, yes? Okay. Yes. Verse 6. Paul says to Timothy here, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God that is in you by the putting on of my hands. You have to stir up the gift that God has given you. How? Do you stir up that gift? By simply doing it. God has given you the gifts of healing. Go pray for the sick. 
Hello? Amen. Thank you. Yes? Amen. <laughs> God has given you the gift of prophecy. When he stirs up in you to prophesy, open your mouth and prophesy. Amen. Amen. Whatever gift God has given you, you stir it up by simply doing it when God tells you to do it, no matter how you feel. Amen. Amen. Maybe you've never prayed for anyone for healing. Or when he tells you to go and pray for that person. If you do not stir up the gift, you say, oh, I can't, Lord, because I've never prayed for anyone for healing. But he already told you to go pray for healing. Now, to stir up that gift, you step out. You go to the person and ask them, can I pray for you for healing? If they say yes, great, they get healed. They say, don't no, forget it. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? But you explain to them that God will heal them if you let them pray for, you, for them. If they let them pray. Amen? If they let, them, let you pray for them, I'm okay. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Amen? Amen? Now, when you do that, and they get healed. That's how you stir up that gift. Okay, but many times we don't stir up the gift that's in us, whatever gift God has given us, because of what? Fear. Verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Who gave it to you? The devil. The devil. Amen? For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? But many times people, because of fear. Now, under fear, there's inferiority, insecurity, intimidation, and all that mess. Shyness, timidity, okay? God didn't give it to us. He gave us power, love, and a sound mind. So if you want to stir up the gift that's in you, you go do what God wants you to do. Step out in faith. Not feeling, in faith. Just with unforgiveness. You do it by faith. You do it because God tells you to forgive. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, let's go on. We're stripping ourselves, right? Okay. <laughs> Strive. James chapter 3. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 3. <clears throat> 16. It says in verse 16, where envying and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. Okay? Confusion and every evil work. Strife. Discord. Amen? It's a spirit. Understand that it is a spirit. You may be all lovey-dovey with your husband or with your wife, and then someone comes, a neighbor or so talks to you, and in the, their home is a lot of strife. Okay? After coffee, the person leaves. You're okay up until then. And all of a sudden, there's strife between the two of you. The husband says something. The wife, or the wife says something. That's okay, strife. But you were not strifeful before that. So what happened? That person that came to your house, brought that spirit of strife with them and dropped it into your house. You understand? Understand that. Any time there's strife between people, it's a spirit. It may be some, even in the church, you're fine with each other. And all of a sudden, you, you see the person, you feel strifeful towards them. Before, you, you were buddy-buddy. And all of a sudden, it's strife. 
Thank you. You, you understand? That's a spirit that was being released. We know that, and you should know that, because strife is not of God. That's the devil. Immediately, you bind and break that spirit of strife in the name of Jesus, command to go from, from you, go from your home in Jesus' name. Loose that anointing to break that yoke in Jesus' name. Lose the peace of Jesus in your home. Amen? Amen. That's what we're to do. Amen? Praise God. So don't allow strife to stay. Okay, I, I gave the example before. Let's say I, I tell Sister Sonny uh, here, okay, you know, Sister Christine, you know what she did to me? And I'll talk about it. She hurt me, okay? And of course, Sister Sunny likes me, and she doesn't want me to be hurt, right? So she hurt that, but she doesn't know Sister Christine, okay? Now one day she meets Chris, Sister Christine in church. She knows her, she knows the name, and all the things that I have said, how Christine has hurt me, da, 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 da. it all comes back. And immediately she will feel strife towards Sister Christina. Are you with me? <clears throat> okay? Don't allow that. Anyway, shut your yap. <laughs> Set a watch before your mouth and keep the door of your lips. Amen. Amen? So, even if Sister Christine, you didn't, okay? Just, just, example. <laughs> even if she has done something to me, I'm to immediately forgive and let go. I am not to go around telling somebody else what they have done to me. You understand? Because if you do that, that is what, how strife comes. If it's in the church, you know what the pastor did to me? You know how, what, he, what he said to me? You know? Not you, Pastor John. <laughs> okay? And so they tell others, and that's how strife gets into the church. And the Word of God says here, where envy and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. I told you about this brother in Singapore who lived you know, we lived in his, his brother's house, right? Yeah. We lived in his brother's house when we first came to Singapore. And uh, in his house, there was always a lot of strife. And so he came to our house. And in Singapore, you leave your shoes, in Southeast Asia, you leave your shoes, shoes at the door, okay? You don't walk in the house with your shoes on. And so he left his shoes at the door. And so we talked, da, 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 da. And then he left. Now, Singapore is not very big, you know? It's very small. I think in half an hour, you can be out of Singapore. OK? <laughs> half hour, three quarters, or whatever, you're out of Singapore. And uh, anyway, he got ready to leave. He said goodbye, and he left. Number one, after he left, we re realized he left his shoes. He got in the car without his shoes. Next thing we know, was maybe an hour later, his wife called. Is he still there? I said, no, he left a long time ago. Well, he hasn't gotten home yet. What happened? He got lost going from our house to his house. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Confusion, okay? Probably he got home, but he couldn't find his house. There was nothing wrong with the brain. It was that spirit of strife that caused the confusion. See, when there's a spirit of strife, there's confusion and every evil work. That's what it says right here, remember? 
Where envy and strife is, there's confusion, every evil work. And then it didn't only... <laughs> <clears throat> we had fun with that brother. What? One time, my husband was going to the gym. We were in Malaysia. He's in Singapore. That spirit comes through the phone. Hello. Okay. And so my husband was going to go to the gym. And he was already in the car. And it, the call came and was that man. That brother wants to talk to my husband real quick, so I ran to the car and said, wait, 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 he wants to talk to you. So he got out the car, went and talked to that brother. And then he was finished, and he was going to go to the gym. And he got in the car, and I watched him getting in the car. And he went and sat in the back seat. Another time, he, same I think we were at their house, and we came downstairs, and we were ready to leave, and he went and sat in the passenger side, trying to drive. Hello? <laughs> Where there's strife, there's confusion. So we had to bind that spirit of confusion, amen? Like I said, it even came through the phone. So we had to bite that spirit of strife. <laughs> Amen? Don't allow strife to stay in your house, in your Bible studies, in your church, wherever. Do not allow it to stay immediately. Cast it out in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay. We're still stripping ourselves, aren't we? Okay, like blind Bartimaeus, he wanted to go to Jesus, he stripped himself. Now we have to strip ourselves of all these different things, okay? Let's look at pride. Now pride, you all know, is haughtiness. That's one part of pride, being lifted up in pride. Like Lucifer, I will be like the Most High. And he was cast out. He was lifted up in pride. Amen? <clears throat> Another way of pride is I can do it myself. I will do it my own way. Okay? I can do it my own way. Go to Proverbs 16. <clears throat> Proverbs 16. Verse 18. It says, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Do you see that? Do not be lifted up in pride. I do this. I prayed for this person, and instantly, because I prayed, instantly they were healed. Hello. I did this. I did that. A haughty spirit being lifted up in pride. You know, and that's one of the six things that God hates. Remember that? Of Proverbs 6, since we're there refresh ourselves here with the word 16 these six things does the, the Lord hate yes seven are an abom abomination to him a proud look a lying tongue don't lie <laughs> you know in the area of praying for people and instant healings or what have you okay and prophesying over people and things uh, you know come to pass Always give Jesus all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. We cannot touch his glory. That's very dangerous. Amen. Okay? Because you, when you look at Herod, okay, the, he was arrayed, and he sat there, and the people 
worshipped him, calling him like he's like a god, okay? And guess what? An angel, because he did not give God the glory, he took it all. An angel came, and guess what happened? He was eaten up of worms. Gross. He died, but was eaten up of worms. Okay? So, I see, a proud look, a lying tongue, don't lie. Hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plans wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies. Okay? Don't lie. And he that sows what? Discord among brethren. How do you do that? With strife. When you have strife, talk bad about each other, talk bad about the past, bad about the, the church. About, you know, that's how you generate strife. Amen? And I'm going to stop here. We shall continue next week. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're not finished undressing. <laughs> We're not finished taking up the garment. Amen? We still have some other things to get rid of. Amen? Amen. But like it says, examine yourself. Don't examine someone else, but examine yourself. Amen? Lift up your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank and I praise you for your word. I thank one for it with power on the anointing in Jesus' name and seal this, seal this word in their spirit being. Father, I thank and I praise you that each person who listens to me today or through YouTube or whatever, okay? Father, I thank and I praise you that they take heed, that they will examine themselves. They will, they will have a desire to have that little fire in them to just become a burning flame of fire, that they will draw more and more closer to God, that they will have a desire to really be close to God, that they will repent and give themselves totally over to God, Lord, and that they will just go and do what God tells them to do. Father, I thank you and I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Lord.